Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Jean, the fishing machine here. We need to go fishing. I got a hankering to go fishing. It's fixing to come up a thundery storm, and we got a little, uh, couple hours to fish. And that's what I want to do. And I'm going to do it. I'm not going to think about it. We're going to see what we can catch at the dam. Let's go do it. Well, doggone it, folks, it's raining. I got here just about the time it, <laughs> it started raining, but we're going to try it anyway. Now, my equipment is going to be a Cadence CR7 6 foot 3 medium light action rod right here. 40 ton construction. And I'm using a little Johnny Morris spinning reel right here i believe it's a 2000 series let's make sure about that it's a bass pro shop tommy morris uh, yeah 2000 series and i only i have 10 pound test braid and with a double uni knot right here for my connection an eight pound fluorocarbon line i'll get it out in a minute now I'm using a tiny fluke. This bait's made by Zoom Bait Company with a 1 16th ounce jig head tabula loop knot. And I've dyed the tail sharp true. So let's see what we can catch right here. The water hat looks good. Let's make a cast. I'm gonna let this bait hit the bottom. And the bottom is kindly like this right here. Little, little rocks. And every once in a while there'll be a big rock. Okay, but anyway, I'm letting that jig hit the bottom, snapping it up, and falling back. And not very far at all, maybe a foot, just like that. And these fish evidently is right on the bottom, no doubt. And as it's falling, they're grabbing it real quick. There we go. Let's see what we got here, folks. That fish was on the bottom. And I swapped jigs. I went to a 1 8 ounce jig right here. I want y'all to look right here. I cannot believe that. Out there in that heavy current. Look at there what a crappie. That's a big crappie. Out there in that heavy current like that, that fish hit right off the bottom. That's an unusual deal. Unusual deal. I'm not kidding you. Let's let him go out right here. Let's watch him swim off. I thought that was going to be a strap. Either a small striper, because they are running right now or a white bass. But now that ain't no joke and that's real unusual. That bait was on the bottom. When I hopped it up, he hit it. But there's a lot of fish right here. My 1 16th wouldn't quite make him bottom contact just right. It was hitting the bottom but not staying there. Okay, I'm on the bottom. I'm gonna jerk it up, let it fall. But I'm going to tell you, that crappie, that was unusual. Real unusual. This bait right here catches them. Look at that water. Well, let's see if we can pick it up. There's the bottom. Okay, I'm snatching it up, and it's falling. Now, if that don't look like a shad, I don't know what does. Let's make another cast. <laughs> let's catch them. There we go. This is good fish right here, folks. Good fish. I'm in a bad situation right here. He's uh, all up in them rocks, and I'm using braid. I'm breaking my laws right here. 
Now this could either be a drum or a flathead. I don't know. It's hard to say. But I'm holding my rod tip way up. I got a long leader. That's why I use a long leader fishing around rocks. That right there is going to build. That's going to save me. But this could be either a drum or a flathead catfish right here. Whatever he is, he's a big one. I'm going to have to follow him down through here. My goodness, he's stripping some light, ain't he? Okay, I'm going to have to just follow him right here. And that's why I like fishing dams. I mean, even from the bank, you're not limited to what you can catch. Especially fishing the way I'm fishing right here. <clears throat> Y'all probably are thinking, why can't we see you rod? Well, I got it held way up to keep that braid from touching them rocks. Woo! They ain't nothing like it. Okay. A sport, second to none. It's a flathead, folks. I don't know how many. I sort of thought he was. The way he was fighting. I don't know how many I've caught on artificials like this. Especially bass fishing at night with a jig and pork combination. That's a great way to catch a lot of flatheads. <laughs> there he is, folks. Flathead catfish. I don't know how many over the years I've caught fishing with artificials. That just shows how much of a predator they really are. And um, this particular bait I'm using, I can't remember the name of it, but I caught speckled trout with that very bait in Florida not too long ago. But uh, I'll leave that bait in the Amazon link. Fantastic bait. Yeah, I'm tore up because I've caught a lot of flathead catfish over the years, especially fishing night tournaments for bass. And I mean big ones. But they're just beautiful fish. And that's all I know to say about it. A spore, second to none. Let's let him go. They're nothing more than a predator. Top-notch predator. We got some dead shad right there, but I'm gonna, let's let that fish go right here and watch him. I'm proud to caught that fish on artificials because I've, I've mentioned that before, and for some reason I hadn't been doing that here lately, but I'm bad to catch them on plastic worms. I've caught them on uh, crankbaits, spinnerbaits. Anyway, let's catch another one. Woo! Woo! Let's catch another one in there, Elmo. Okay, let me show y'all what I'm doing right here because it's really important when you're fishing current. And I'm gonna mention the fact that these dams are dynamite. This is a dynamite bait to fish with. And I tell you, the old standby sassy shad is hard to beat too. But the reason why I like this particular bait right here, it's a Z-Man, a Laztec. They're tough. Now, when I was in Florida, I caught about 20 speckled trout on this bait right here. That's the reason why it's dyed red right here instead of sharp truce. Really, sharp truce would be the color that I need here, kind of yellow tails here on uh, the Tennessee River, but the red, it, it don't make any difference. Fish is hitting it anyway, so let's make our another cast, and I'm just letting it hit the bottom. Throwing slack in my line, letting it hit the bottom. Okay. Now, once it gets to the bottom, I'm getting in contact with my bait, and I'm picking it up and letting it fall like that. Sometimes I jerk it hard, and sometimes just a little bit. Sometimes just a couple inches off the bottom, then let it hit. And a lot of times, that's the best way, really, because the bait's moving in the current. You really don't want to hop it too far off the bottom. If I had a while ago, I wouldn't have caught that flathead. I, you know, 
and they could be a small mouth in here, large mouth, spotted bass, anything that hit this bait. And there's a lot of baits you can use to have the same result. But the reason I like this particular bait is because it's tough. Real tough. Let's catch another on it. Let's see what I have. There he is. I knew it, I knew it. This is probably a white bass. I can't believe this. It's a doggone crappie again, right off the bottom. Now that is one of the most unusual things. I've had this happen probably three or four times in my whole life, but that's a black crappie. That's a second one. Very unusual for him to hit right off the bottom like that. But I've done it. I've had it happen before. Let's let this fish go. So, what does that mean? That means there's a school of crappie right here set up. Right at the end of those rocks. And if I'd have brought my crappie stuff with me, there ain't no telling how many I could catch right here, folks. And I'm not kidding. What about that? That's a very unusual for crappie. On the bottom, pick it up, snap it up, let it fall, snap it up. Nothing fancy right here, it don't have to be. Because you have the current helping you make that bait look live. There we go. Let's see what we got right here. It's one fish after the next one. All right, folks, it is what it is. That's the, the third crappie, I believe. I see they're number three, two or three, maybe four. I can't remember, but that's a black crappie. Caught that fish the same way, same way. Very, very unusual. Now, that's why you should go fishing when you can. You don't never tell what, you can't never tell what'll happen. There he goes. To do and a scooby dooby roo and a scooby dooby doo. There we go. That was a very, very light bite, but I can feel it on that braid. That fish is taking some drag, but I've lightened everything up right here too folks now i went to a eight pound leader right here and a one sixteenth of an ounce jig head and the reason i did that i don't know this fish is mean the reason i did that is because the current is not as stiff right here so matching that jig head to the current speed is very very important you want that jig to move about the same speed as the current that'll keep you from getting hung up in all these rocks is bad by doing that so it pays to have different sizes of jig heads is what I'm trying to say that braid is real sensitive that is if you don't have a lot of slack in your line if you're keeping in contact with it it is but if you have a lot of slack in braid it's almost useless it's not near as sensitive as mono you have to fish it a lot different this fish is mean <laughs> That's what I thought. I think we got a big, huge, huge drum. Yeah, looky here. No wonder that fish give me a fight like that. And we'll look at that little bait that I caught him on. Got him right in the snoop. Big old drum. Whew. I want y'all look. I'll hold that up so y'all can see. Now, this is a big one. Now, folks, 
that's a big drum right there. Uh, as light as the bite was, I thought it was a small mouth or a big spotted bass. But and then I thought it was a flathead because there's a lot. These two, uh, this a drum and a flathead fight basically the same, very close. But let's let him go. There he goes. I was gentle with that fish. That's the reason why that fish swam off, swam, swam off so good. I'm telling y'all, when I'm fishing, <laughs> I get excited. Nobody, I don't know anybody that gets excited as I do. I can't even talk. But this is the bait right here I caught him on. Okay, the tiny fluke. And a one sixteenth of an ounce jig head. And that's it. Ain't that something? Well, folks, that was an outstanding fishing trip for just a couple hours. And uh, it did rain on me. Several thunderstorms come through, and I had to duck in the truck. Duck in the truck to get out of them, but I went right back, and I just continued fishing. That's a great way to fish very productive a lot of fun simple nothing complicated about fishing there's just a lot of different ways to fish and I want to thank y'all very much for all the great comments everything y'all do just like always it's the best way I know to say it appreciate every one of them and here comes the car let me do it quick Always. Oh,